Welcome to today's episode of the Group X Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Zanato, and if you haven't yet done so, hit that follow button so you never miss another episode. Today, I'll be talking to Sharon Susi, trainer and presenter for Les Mills Asia Pacific. From the days of freestyle aerobics and the Reebok slide through to today, Shaz has seen and experienced it all. Working alongside legends like Mike McSweeney, John Kelly, Shannon Cleary and Alani Mala, Shaz has seen the true evolution of our industry as well as our highs and lows. What a journey. Grab your favourite beverage, sit back and enjoy the show. Jazz, thank you so much for joining me on the show tonight. I greatly appreciate your time. Oh, look, thank you so much for having me, Tony, really. <laughs> this is wonderful. Look, I'm, I'm, I've got to say right now that I'm so, so humbled by how many people have actually turned around and said yes, that they wanted to come on and have a chat. So seriously, from me to you, I know we haven't even gotten into it, but thank you because <laughs> I, this is, yeah, such a, a great thing for me to be able to chat to you guys. So I, I really do appreciate it. Oh, mate, you are very welcome. (laughs) Thank you. Hey, tell us, I want to know how you got into the fitness industry. Where did it all start for you? Um, It all started for me a long time ago now. (laughs) Probably if I'm really honest, doing uh, afternoon school sport at high school and going to the local gym to do aerobics as leisure sport. Yep. Because I was kind of overdoing all the competitive stuff. I did enough of that on the weekend. Yep. And I ended up going to this gym called Body Works at um, Mount Gravatt or Carindale in Brisbane. Yep. And one of the owners, it was a husband and wife team, was somebody that I used to dance with. Well, she was a she was a group ahead of me. Yep. But she recognised me, and then I started going outside of school. So when I could afford to, you know, paying with my money from the taco den job that I had then yeah um I think I joined the gym at about 17 conned my mom into driving me up there just to do classes then when I could go on my own I did yeah and um probably been going for a couple of years and Kath actually said to me one day she goes why don't you go and do your instructor training because you've got the dance background movement to music comes really easily for you yeah you, you know your technique's going to be amazing it's yeah. just you know then that was it. Went and did the old fitness leader as it was then. Yep. And the group fit, the ex group fitness module or exercise to music module or whatever it was. Yep. And yep. that was it. What I'm going to ask a, a, a silly question here. What year are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> when I did, when I did my training. Yeah. Uh, I let me think now, hang on. <laughs> Cause I went into, here's a bit of stuff. Well, most people do know this about me, um, that I used to be in the police force in Queensland. Oh, wow. I didn't know um, that. I like it. No, I had no idea. Cool. Now there's just about 30 contracts on my head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, we can edit that bit out. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was at the academy. Uh, academy when I was 19, graduated 20. Uh, let's go 19. 91 or 92 91 i think it was 1990 yep. or 91 yep wow yeah so a long time yes <laughs> you i'm gonna say you you have seen you would have seen so much in our industry you would have seen yeah. a, an absolute yeah. truckload of of changes yep. from because i'm gonna say back then pump probably wasn't even around no i was good old hardcore freestyle days of <gasps> new body high low oh. um I can't, EBT, what the hell else was there? Can't even think at that stage. And then through all the fads of, oh, well, Step was around. Yep. But then into the, like the sl- the Reebok slide. <gasps> Reebok slide, and... I remember that. My mum had one. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. That was a mother on your legs, like your inner thighs. Yes. Oh, I remember people walking around looking very, very weird Actually, with I, their gait. Weirdly their enough, I remember doing that for sport at, at school in in. In high school, there was, we went to the gym for something and there was, they put on a class for us. And I, I now remember, cause you had to put those shoe sock things. Little like, booties was, on. Yeah. yeah your that shoes. Just yeah, reminded yep. me of a shower cap on your foot that you're yep. able to use to, to slide from <laughs> side it. to side. And there was that bit of foam at the end that stopped you from yep. just kept going. Sliding off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Into the next person. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's, sorry. That's just brought back memories of, of <laughs> many, 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 many moons ago. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so yes, continue on with your story. Sorry, I sidetracked us then. 
so that's where I started. Yep. Um, what? Uh, it was probably, uh, when did I do pump training? Body pump would have been maybe three or four years after that. Yep. Maybe four, oh, hang on, four or five. Uh, oh, it's so blurry now, Tony. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I was, I actually did my pump training. I think I was like the second round or one of the second gyms in Queensland to actually do body pump. To do the training, and yeah. I've been incredibly fortunate with the amazing people that I have been able to train under. And I was, I say lucky enough. Some people say, <laughs> you know, unlucky enough, yep. but I was lucky enough to get the legendary Mike McSweeney <gasps> as the person who trained me for body no. pump. Yeah. I love, you know what, Mike, I, I'm yep. going to share a little story here for a second and we'll get you back on track. Mike McSweeney came <laughs> to Sydney um, and was living in Sydney for a while and came to teach at Fitness First North Sydney, where I was yep. teaching, where I just sort of started. So I did my training in RPM in 2003. So I'm going to say this was probably 2005, maybe 2006, mm. somewhere around there that he he was there. And I yep. team taught an RPM track with the man and, and it went well. And then at the end of the class, I said to him, mate, so, you know, you got any feedback for me? Tony, in track six, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> let the music do what it's got to do just sit there set them up and shut up you spoke far too much in that track and i will never yep. ever forget having yeah. that opportunity <laughs> one to sit next to that man and 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 team teach your class but to have that that yeah brutal you know honest yep. feedback was was I, look i'll treasure it forever but it was just that yep that was a bit harsh <laughs> but, but, okay yep so forever no then it was i'd set him up in track six and shut up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he had a way with with doing everything that he did he just yeah. really had a a certain yeah certain something but, uh, yep. so how was that training module can you remember that far back hard Yep. Very hard. I remember um, <laughs> still in, well, I was actually in the police force then and working yep. and trying, I'll say trying to go to work the next couple of days. I did go, but I remember <laughs> trying to get out of the police car. Like I had to <laughs> hold the door and the door jam <laughs> to get out. And the guys at work thought it was freaking hilarious. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, until someone runs and then you buggers have got to trace yeah, them down you've got to today do it. because yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> um, I just, I just remember having the worst doms ever in my life and yeah. nothing has ever surpassed it because yeah. body pump training then was very, very different to yeah, body imagine. pump training when, when I was presenting it yeah. and got to do aim one. Yeah. Um, but even what I would, I'm def definitely what I would imagine body pump training would be like now. Yeah. It was, it was full core brutal. It was so hard. How many days was the training back then when you did it? Um, it was two, and then a few weeks later, it was one of the girls from Canberra who had already been trained in the program and teaching for a while. She did the day three. Okay. So it was yep. three days in total. Yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, in those days, that was before the certification system was up and running. So yes. I had to get certified like a year or six months after. Yeah. After yep. the initial training because yep. the, the infrastructure just wasn't in place. Yeah. Um, no, I remember yeah, that. It was... I think from, from memory when I did mine in 2004, it was the two day, so the mm. Saturday, Sunday, one, one week, and then you came back, I think you came back two weeks later yeah. and did the, yep. the Sunday or the, the, like day. the day three yeah. again. And that's when you yep. either got, you got, um, yeah, pass to go or, or, you know, pass to shadow, whatever it was, or, or complete yeah. fail, which I don't think many people did <laughs> back then. <laughs> they weren't that bad no. that they, they got through, but then you had... I think then you had it was either six, as you said, six or twelve months to to do your certification mm, video. Certification, then, yeah, yeah, stick it off. But you you wanted to try and do it as soon as you can, so you're able to yep, you get out and teach yeah. teach on your That's own. Right. And yeah, yep. Wow. And he he said, and this is where the whole Les Mills journey for me began. Was he said to me on the end of my day too? He said, "Give yourself twelve months teaching this, and then you could be a trainer in any of our programs." <laughs> That's awesome. From the man himself. <laughs> Yep, so it's all Mike McSweeney's fault. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, M Mike, you're in trouble. We're blaming you. <laughs> Actually, there's nothing to blame for. We thank him for it. We don't blame him at all. We go, dude, thank you so much. That's brilliant. That's... Yeah, as I said, very, very fortunate to have yeah. trained under some other people that I have, yeah. 
This is the Group X Podcast. Can you remember teaching your first class? My first body pump class or my yeah. first class in general or my first Well let's let's go class. well let's go body pump class. I wanna I wanna focus on that for a second. How did you go teaching um, my first Oh, you know what? It you know, duck to water. Yep. It was it literally felt like because that was that was my jam. Like I was one of those few people in those days or women that really liked to weight train. Yep. Um yep. loved it. So give me a barbell and stick me in front of a group full of people that yep. You know, I already loved, you know, helping people achieve their fitness goals yeah. and having fun with them at the same time yep. and combine it with something that they've never done before or they're afraid to do with their women because I'm going to get huge and, you know, debunking the myths and watching these women grow, yeah. um, you know, emotionally and, and mentally as yep. well as physically. Yeah. Um, but it was, oh, it was fantastic. I was a bit nervous yep. um, because originally I was like, pre-choreography, are you serious? You're going to tell me what I have to do? <laughs> hmm, not quite sure if I like that. Yep. And yep. then as I really settled into it, it was like, this is cool. I don't have to think about yep. what the hell comes next. Yeah. I can focus on the people. This is amazing. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing that. And thank you for sharing that as well. It's It's everyone that I've chatted to so far when I've asked that question has been, a different sort of response in in how it was and, and sort of what, you know, some of them have been like, you know what, I was a deer in headlights. It was absolute oh, chaos. And I remember mine was <laughs> so bad, so bad. I, I, I with when I did RPM, I, I passed to Shadow only. And so I was up there with Shannon Cleary and Shannon yep. didn't let me do anything apart from track five, faster, harder scooter <laughs> uh, for, I'm going to say seriously, about 10 weeks. I had to yep. nail it before she let me yep. do anything else. Yep. Did to say, as soon as I was allowed to stop teaching that, I think I went back to it once in my <laughs> entire career of teaching and never did it again. But, I, I <laughs> but it, it, was, it was fantastic though because the way she did it was very much – Tone, you know what, I'm going to make sure you nail this before we even go yeah. to the next step because if you don't, everything is going to be a train wreck. Yeah. And yep. and so she gave me that confidence as well just doing that one track every week, which was fantastic. But when I went to yeah. do my own class, oh, crap. Yeah. It, it just, <laughs> it was, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave that for another time. Maybe someone can interview me one day and I'll go through that process with them. <laughs> so you, you, you did okay though with the... I did, but but by the time I got to Body Pump, I'd been teaching group fitness for what four or five years. Yeah. So, yep. you know, my first Body Pump class wasn't too bad because by that stage, I like I practiced, I yeah. practiced, I yep. rehearsed, I did what Mike had said, I scripted my class, yep. I yep. knew what I was going to say when. Um, my first class itself, that was a, well, a tell, hot mess. Tell us about that then, because obviously that was very very different to <laughs> to Body Pump. I want that story and how did what what class was it and how did it go actually hang on, i take that back my first class was a new body class or a low impact class yep and again that, that actually didn't go too badly but i was very much yeah deer in headlights you could i reckon if someone had videoed that the look on my face you would have seen the cogs turning in my head <laughs> from the back of the room like four more reps Yep. And three and two and step yep. touch to the right go um yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that 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 went okay like and nobody died i didn't fall off the stage <laughs> um and people were very you know very forgiving in those days when you were new and starting out and yep. um yeah so it wasn't a complete train wreck it was a it was a bit hot and messy um, but obviously it didn't scar me cause I kept going. You can, yes. Yeah. You just went near what? Yeah. I think that's that, that, that first class for a lot of people, as I said, is, is that, oh crap, you're either going to sink or swim and it's yeah. either going to make you or break you. You can turn around and go, you know what? Yeah, I got this. Like everything, you know, you learn, you're not going to yeah. turn around and be perfect in your first one. If you are, you make me sick. Oh God, but, no. <laughs> Those people that, that I see that do it, I'm like, uh, yeah, shut up. How did you pull all that together? Like, come on. I, I was, you know, my left is my right. My right's my left. And I'm like, Wait, who? Now I've got to listen to music and I've got to tell you what to do. And I'm, I'm stuffed at the same. Right. Yeah. Good on you, smarty pants. <laughs> that shit is learnt. It's not automatically born like that. Okay. <laughs> no. No, and it, it is like it is it is all a skill. So for yeah. people who yeah come out look like they come out of the womb doing it, yeah, then there's a hell of a lot of practice that's going on behind the scenes the, yes. for yep. all those skills to come out so naturally first go. Yeah. 
Hey, with when back in your freestyle days, let's just go down that path mm. for a second, if we, if you don't mind. I, I mm. know, and I from from chatting to not guys in this, but but just people in the industry that I I've I've known for years that were freestyle instructors. Back in the day, a lot of freestyle mm. instructors would travel from gym to gym to gym to learn off other freestyle instructors. Was that yep? Was that happening in your time? Back then, like, did you would you go from one gym to another to do someone else's class to try and pick up some of their moves and learn that stuff, and then bring it back to add into your repertoire of what you were doing? Um, I would go to all the classes at the gym where I was teaching. Yep. Um, because they had in the day or that day, um, it was actually known as one of the really good aerobic gyms to go to. Yep. yep. Um, there was a there was a gym at uh, Buranda, I think it would be called, yeah, Buranda, across the road from the PA hospital, and I think it was called Movements. And they also had, um, actually, people in across Australia may know or remember her, this phenomenal woman called Bronwyn Price, who ended up becoming my group fitness manager at Body Works after a while. But she taught at Movements, and this woman could come up with the most phenomenal stuff. Yep. It was great. Yep. Um, also in the day, Tawong Fitness was the place that you would go to and they would have some absolute ripper instructors as well. Um, and I remember it's like if you ever got to fill at Tawong or get a class at Tawong, then then you'd made it. Yeah. And I'll never forget the day I got, I got asked to fill there and I was like, woo, <laughs> and I got asked to go back as well. So yep. um, Brilliant. Must have um, done something right. Must have done something right. Yeah. So. And I, so I kind of watched all these women and, and guys as well and the way they taught. And I, I didn't really go to steal things off them, yep. uh, but I went to, to learn and watch what they did. Yep. And I think that gave me the confidence to go, hey, you know what? I know all this really cool stuff from dance. Yeah. I have all these dance routines from my, my life experience in dance. I just need to simplify this stuff. And instead of trying to think of like a whole dance routine going into a class, I just need to take a quarter of that thing and break it down into little bits and pieces that they can learn and use that. Yep. And Bronnie actually said to me a number of years later, she said, you remember when you did your aerobic module over there at Movements with, you know, Di Alwood? And I went, yeah. She goes, I don't know if you saw, but there was me and there was Morty and there was this person and that person. And in your little routine that you had to do, we're all like starting to take notes because we're going, who is this chick? Where has she come from? Excellent. With all these ideas. <laughs> But I would have, you know, conversations with Bron and, you know, chat with her a lot about teaching yeah. um, and things to do and way to change things. And another absolutely delightful human being called David Keogh, who used to teach at Tuong Fitness. And then I met him when he came to Club BJ and was teaching there with me. Um, and I had a number of really good chats with Dave as well about, you know, t teaching to people and where we thought, you know, because just before LM came into Australia, aerobics was really starting to plummet in Australia. Oh, really? And yeah, it, well, in, in Queensland anyway. Um, yeah, people were, gym owners were talking about, you know, filling in their group fitness studios and turning them into cardio rooms or oh, wow. <laughs> pools or things like that. That that was a concern. Numbers started to drop. Yeah. And he and I had this big discussion about that. We agreed that it had come from, instructors were trying so hard to do something different to pull people back Yeah, that the routines were just getting super crazy yep. and yep. people, it was too much. People were getting lost in the complexity. Yeah, And I just said, if you're going to teach something really complex, then you have to be able to break it down into something, you know, really simple that yep. people are going to get Yeah, and then either layer on or do your add on or pick, like pick your, your teaching formula that they taught you how to teach group fitness back in those days yep, yep. and the multiple ways to put a routine together it's you know pick which one of those works well for the people in your class so yep, yep. you had to be that you know that thing we talk about with lm about you know talking to the teach sorry talking to teaching to the people who are in front of you yes yep. um you you really had to be able to do that that well yeah um but yeah so Oh, that's look. I I remember my first ever freestyle class that I went into was with Amanda Breen, um, in Bond, oh, Breen. Bond yeah Bondi <laughs> Bondi Edge Fitness First, and yep. um, it was it was because I decided to go and do Cert Three, and they told yep. us that you know what you you will need to do a group fitness 
side of things. And I was like, oh, but I've already done my RPM training because I did them back to front. Yep. And and uh, they're like, no, 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 you can't do RPM because it's different. You need to do, you know, the, the group fitness strand and it's, it's got to be freestyle. You, your routine must be a freestyle routine. I'm like, oh, let me just get on a bike and do it. They're like, no, 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 you can't do that. It's, got, it's like, but hang, hang on, hang, <laughs> oh, I, I, no. I'm, I'm never, never, ever going to <laughs> teach a freestyle group fitness class. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing grapevines. I'm not going to be doing heel taps or whatever they were called and, and marches and all this kind of stuff. But I, I, I had to. So I, I ended up going to, to this Saturday morning class that Amanda was teaching. And I did it for a couple of weeks before I, I then sort of was like, okay, you need to help me. <laughs> Amanda, you, you've got it. You, 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 <laughs> Fitness First North Sydney, Sunday afternoon, 3.30, be there because I've chosen music and I got no bloody idea what we're doing here. But but I, I went to her class and the, you were talking about layering and that's that's the only yep. way that I was able to present this this three minute track that I had to had to yep. present because <laughs> those those blokes that are out there not even, not all all blokes as well but even there's I'm sure there's some ladies out there as well that that understand where I'm coming from in that that freestyle is is a an art. Yeah, those mm. those of you that that could nail freestyle, I my hat goes off to you straight away because there is there is a lot more in that than than I ever thought to to pull together something to actually make it understandable for people mm. um, was was the key. You know, I I, I I started marching on the spot. I walked forward. I walked back. We we tapped to the side. We went over and did a, an L shaped grapevine and. And I got it all. Don't get me wrong. It was it was three minutes of probably the worst of my life, but the best fun of my life. <laughs> at the same time. Um, I'm sure if there's a video out there somewhere, I would love to get my hands on it and watch it again one day and go, Tone, what were you thinking? <laughs> my God. <laughs> hey, but you got it done, and you yep, got your call right. That's exactly that was it. But it's I, I I seriously understand that whole concept of of when when instructors made it too difficult. Yeah, it, I completely understand that that would have killed it in some places because yep. I, I remember sitting back and watching some freestyle step routines and and look, I've, I've said this on one of the other episodes. I tripped. I first time I ever did step, I tripped over the step before the class started, twisted my <laughs> ankle and never went back. And I was like, no, oh, this is no. not doing this ever again. <laughs> but I would watch that class, you know, go on and yeah, man, anyone that was ever a freestyle stepper, the the tech, the the coordination that you guys yep. have is just yep. absolute phenomenal. It's, yep. it's not, it's not an easy thing, but I can just imagine with, uh, you know, all the other freestyle routines that were going on to, to try and attract, uh, yep. you know, people to come to your class, you would, you would think that I oh, know we have to have to try and adapt and do something new and, and that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest and say in a way, I'm sort of glad that <laughs> the pre choreographed stuff came out. Yep. <laughs> to to make it easier one for numpties like me, uh, as as participants, but also for for instructors as well. That that it was you know yeah. I, I don't need to try and come up with something new every time no. I teach. You know what? It's okay no. to do this same routine for for yes. you know eight, ten, twelve weeks, whatever it may be, so that people adapt yep. and feel confident in doing it yep. and not not you know oh my crap what what you want I, I can't move that way my my yeah my body doesn't do that. <laughs> 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 and freestyle like teaching freestyle was great for that um yep. you know even even now still people are oh i'm gonna do the new release for you know three or four weeks or whatever and all oh, that i'm going to go back to some different stuff because i need a change yes um freestyle yep. freestyle is a great teacher in m helping you to understand as an instructor that you know just because you're bored at eight repetitions or you yep. feel like it's time to move on your class doesn't or yes. isn't they need 16 yeah it's they're not going to get it in you know, they need the first four to actually pick up what the hell you're doing. Yeah. Then they use the next four to like self-correct themselves. And yep. then they have the next, you know, however many reps you give them to settle into it and yes. feel confident in it. Yeah. So, you know, I was never in a, in a massive hurry to move on with anything with, yep. <laughs> with yep. releases. Yeah. Is it up in your area where you are, where you're based, mm -hmm. are there still a lot of freestyle instructors or is it predominantly... No, nah. I mean, oh. uh, pre corried stuff these days. It's predominantly pre corried where, you know, we are. So, yep. my, I mean, mostly good life and fitness first here. Yep. There's, you know, the, the other gyms that 
oh, 24 hours don't really have group fitness per se. Yep. Um, yep. And then you've got, you know, some of you, you're privately owned with, with people that still, you know, family owned sometimes or they're yes. still privately owned, like, yep. like the workout at Indrapilly where, yep. Um, yep. yeah, but most of it is, yeah, it's, it's pre, it's pre Corey in, in the, in the group fitness yeah. studio. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that I remember down in Canberra when we were there for five, but also in, in Sydney for many years prior, the the group, the the freestyle group fitness group X instructors that were around, while there there weren't that many of them, mm. the good ones had an understanding of the Les Mills format and the Les yep. Mills structure. And they they yep. brought that into their yeah. freestyle but had their own flair and had their style of music and did their yep. thing and and that would they were the ones that were amazing because they grasped that concept of what les mills is all about but put it yep. into their freestyle format and they were great the, the ones that and I, I mean zero disrespect when i say this so if there's freestyle instructors out there that are just freestyle and not not uh pre-choreographed please i'm not having a go but in sydney what i saw back then were that just freestyle only didn't have mm. that i don't even know what word to use you know, did just didn't have that flair or didn't have that that pizzazz um yeah that, there are few someone, and far between that did yeah, yeah yeah and it's it's i think it's it's a it's almost like a, a lost art or a dying art you know the, the freestyle yeah. group fitness instructors i think that that les mills have made it easy which is good don't get me wrong mm. but i think it's it's mm. almost made some of our instructors a little lazy that probably yes. do have the um yes. they do have that that quality or they do have that spark or you know that talent to be able to do it but just uh you know what it's easy to do this you know i, I would seriously love to see some more freestyle instructors out there this is the group x podcast What was your next program after pump? What was the next pre-choreographed program that you did training in? Would you believe body step and body attack in one weekend? One oh. day module at that stage. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that, look, I've, I've only ever done <laughs> one attack class in my life with my wife. And, yeah. and let me tell you, that was a challenge <laughs> in itself. <laughs> but to do to module, holy crap. Yeah. That, how did that work? Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I really can't remember. Um, we did body wow. attack on the first day and then we did body step on the second day. Um, we did present a track. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of, oh, I can't even remember. You know what? I can't remember. I do remember we had to present. Those um, programs are pretty different. I mean, they're, yes, they're, they're athletic programs, but they are, they're quite different programs, yeah? They, yeah, they are. I think that was when after, you know, Pump had been such a success in Australia that um, there was then this keenness to bring more in yep. and yep. attack and step with the next two to come come through. Yep. Um, and, and that's an of intense course, like, weekend. Yeah, it was an intense weekend um, with, <laughs> with JK as the uh, trainer. Yep. yep. So. <laughs> Wow. So that was my, yeah, see, again, fortunate. Yes. Um, that was yes. my intro to JK. Yeah. Um, John Kelly. For those yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. Don't Sorry know for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> I know you know, but not everybody Duh. knows. So Sorry. Yeah. JK. So that's what we call him. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So just a two day, two day training for. Yeah, it was a two-day training. Again, probably before the cert, well, definitely before the certica certification Patience process stuff. was in. It yeah. was, I think I'd only been teaching pump maybe a year or two, maybe before that happened. Yep. Um, and I love reflecting yeah. on that right now with you because if you look at that compared to where the programs are today, oh gosh, yeah, like they have yeah. evolved so damn much. Oh. Christ Almighty! Like <laughs> even even in the last 10, 15 years, you know, the, 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 from the early two thousands to now, yeah, you know that. Yeah, that, I mean, God, that's that's almost twenty years, Tony. When you're talking about ten to fifteen, Jesus, where are those years gone? Um, but you know, the the, the programs have evolved in so much. Ev in every way. I mean, you know, the the first I remember when I was living in Sydney, I was living with Andrew Taylor and and Vanessa Labort, 
that it's a laboratory, Labor. sure, I think it was, yeah. And I remember coming home from, from doing PT and, and walking in and these guys are watching this old VHS and it was seriously yeah. almost a camcorder at the back of the room yep. um, filming what was going on in front. None of the production stuff like you see today no. with, with you no. know multiple cameras and, and lighting and nope. proper sound and, and all of that nope. kind of stuff. It's so, so different. And, and as an industry, we have, we've evolved so rapidly. Yes. Even yes. though it, it may feel like it not for some people, I think we've we have we've we've grown so much when you look at the programs that are out now yeah. compared to back then. But wow. Two days. Two days. I get sorry, my brain just fries at that. It's like I've got to try and get my head around going. Your brain that fried was, at that. <laughs> can only imagine what you went through doing it. <laughs> it was it was fairly stressful. Wow. <laughs> So teaching after a two day, after a, well, it's a one day module really, isn't it? Because it was yeah. one day for each. How did you go? Yep. Did you start teaching those programs? Um, yeah, I did start teaching those programs. So what was I teaching then? I was teaching at a, a gym. It was called Springwood, Springwood, Springwood Sports Centre or Springwood Fitness Centre, something like that. So yep. just on the southern, southern outskirts of Brisbane, I guess. Yep. Um, yeah. So they had pump and I originally like just got a couple of classes there and then they were like, hey, we want to get step and attack. No one else has really got that yet. Are you keen on doing the training? Yep, sure, no worries. Yeah. Um, I think we had about a month to learn like releases, which was gr- lucky for <laughs> for launch at that stage. And we did we did launch in pairs um, or as a team, I yep. think. Yep. Um, I think I actually think what we did was we launched attack first and then we launched step maybe a month later. So our brains went completely fried. Yeah. Um, and then after a while, we sort of decided, you know, that it, pretty much all the instructors that were there got trained. So it was clearly not enough classes for everyone. Yeah. So then we sort of picked and chose what we would prefer to teach as well as what worked on the timetable. Yep. And I ended up, um, I ended up choosing step. So, and body step was the first program that I was a trainer and presenter. In, so no way. Yeah. Can I ask you, were you still a, a police officer during all of this? All this was going on? You yeah. were still, still in the police yeah. force and still managed to yep. have yep. it? Wow. Yep. People that tell me that they can't have a full-time job and still teach, I, I sort of go, you know what? No, you can. We can still have a you, full-time job and you can teach. You just need you to can. work out when you're teaching and make it work in with your commitments yeah. and everything else that you've got yep. going on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you, you have I've you've I've I've lost words. I have I have not <laughs> I had see I've obviously had no idea about any of this and I, I love the fact that you're sharing your story with me because I, I one, I appreciate it for the show, but two, yeah. it, it just shows how how we has we have as an industry really, really changed and evolved from yeah from what used to happen to to how it is now. Yep. How did you how and did you get on to sorry, you were gonna say something then? I was going to go and then pretty much hot on the heels of that. So after I became a step trainer and presenter, literally after I think my first quarterly um, was, hey, we're bringing out body combat. (laughs) And I remember Joe Wade, who was um, the other person in Queensland who, so Joey was doing pump at that stage. He was a pump trainer and presenter. He goes, hey, Shaz, you should do this with me. And I can't even remember who the training manager was at that stage. And I'm like, oh, is, is that an option? And they were like, yeah, sure. If you want to, yep. I'm like, what does it involve? It's like, we've well, got to kind of come to Canberra for the weekend and organize your own accommodation and your own transport to the venue, yep. to Deacon. Yep. And um, yeah, if you can do all of that, then yeah, giddy up, let's do it. How did the opportunity arrive, arise for you to be a trainer and presenter? How did that, um, how did that come about? There were, they were calling for, uh, or auditions, I think it was for trainers, for presenters. I think at that, I might have been trainer and presenter. I think it was, and you had to. I think I saw it in the the newsletter, which came by mail in those days, not yep. email. Yep. And read it and gave J.K. a buzz because he was working for Les Mills at that stage in an admin. I don't know what role exactly, yeah. but yep. some sort of administrative role as well as being a presenter and trainer. And he said, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, definitely." Like you know, put your, 
he said, we need a video of you. He said, so you're going to have to video part of a class. It doesn't have to be a full class. Yep. Um, he said, send it down and we'll go from there. And I was like, okay. So then I remember madly dashing around, finding, trying to get a video, a video camera, camera to yeah. <laughs> video a body step class to, and then I'm like, how the hell do I do this? And how the hell do I put that tape onto a VHS? And how the hell does that like? Uh, yep. So the whole, you know, technological side yeah. back in the <laughs> yes. early 90s. Yeah, it was a challenge. Out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, and getting that sent down to Canberra in a very hastily, <laughs> yep. really, to um, for them to look at and go, yeah, you're in. We want you. That's fantastic. And I was like, shut the front door. Yeah. <laughs> You want me? What? <laughs> yeah, you want me? What? This is crazy. Like, seriously? Surely there's got to be someone better out there. That's brilliant though. <laughs> that's that's so different to to how most most well, it's so different to how it happens these days. Oh god, um, yeah. 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 Like, wow. Crazy crazy different to and I can still remember, you know, actually, you know, running auditions yep. when I was, you know, an HBC. Yep. And you know, that even that process compared to mine, like people saying to me, so how did you feel in this in this situation when this was you? Yep. And I went, well, my recruitment process was a lot different, different. to yours. Yeah. Um, yep. And inside voice, and we're not going to talk about that right now because yep. this is about you <laughs> <laughs> to them. Yes. Um, and I don't want to freak you out anymore than you probably already are. Yes. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you'd, you'd just be sitting there, you know, a, a moment on any one of those days and, I still remember, I think, turning to Karen Russell, who was beside me at one of them, we were doing Queensland auditions, and I said to her, "How?" I actually said, how fucking different is this yep. from the process that you and I went through? And especially like her, because she was picked as a body pump trainer and presented before me, and I literally, for Kaz, I think it was like, hey, you, you're really good at this. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> um, I've got to get in contact will, with her may, as well. I've got to get her she, on. That, I've got to get her on for That chat. may not be completely correct, yep. but... Um, yeah, I think. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, it is. It's a whole shitload like different." Yeah. To what to what we had, um, and my my getting on board as a trainer. So after that, they hadn't developed or let LMAP or LMA as it was in those days. Yes. Yep. Hadn't developed the module training for body step yet in a for for what was going to be done here, or or I'm assuming it hadn't come through from New Zealand. How. Yep the module was going to be broken down to be delivered outside of NZ. Yep. So I ended up going to the train the trainer for body attack one weekend. <laughs> so yeah, so not even a trainer or presenter in body attack, but we're going to Sydney to do this thing to get an idea of what it is that you're going to be doing. Wow. So wow. I rock in with Kat, with Kaz, like I'm like, and I'm not, okay, big big secret here that probably half the people in the fitness industry have no idea about is I am not that hugely self-confident, super intimidating person that people <laughs> seem to think I am. I am the softest marshmallow that hates change is so incredibly shy until I joined the police force because I had to learn to speak to people then. So I'm rocking into this room, literally like I reckon I felt like a little kid holding onto Karen Russell's leggings, yeah. like a little kid holding onto their mum's skirt. <laughs> um, got introduced to Shelley Townsend. So, I yep. mean, everybody's really nice, of course. Yep. And Shell's lovely. And in that same group is Shannon Cleary, yep. Shannon Ponton, that some yep. folk may remember off The Biggest Loser, yep. the good good old Mish Bridges herself, yep. um, Andrew Simmons, and Lord help me, Lisa Osborne. And at that stage... Ozzy wow. was this woman that I had watched on television do, you know, sport aerobics. And I'm like, oh my God, I am in the same room with Lisa Osborne. Yeah. And as fate would have it, I got paired up with her to do so many of the drills that we did Excellent. all weekend. And so, yeah, that I, I got to spend the whole weekend learning from not only Emma Barry, again, very fortunate, yep. who was taking that. Um, but yeah, working alongside, you know, Lisa Osborne plus all these other, you know, fabulous human beings that you can learn so much from. Um, but wow. very, very early in my days, it's like, you know, Shannon Cleary and Michelle Bridges in the same room. Yeah. That was, yep. <laughs> wow. That was full on. <laughs> oh, oh, can imagine. Personality plus. <laughs> e ego plus is just absolutely wow. Yeah. But my still, goodness. you know, still 
so so very welcoming yeah. and yeah. very friendly and so happy to help you know and to try and do their best to make you feel to recognize how uncomfortable I was feeling and how intimidating it was and do their very very best to make me feel very welcome yeah. part of the family yeah. like from day one look that's that's one thing that I remember about Mish was was the first time I met her um, was a, a quarterly workshop and I walked into yeah. the room and I was one of the first ones in the room, but she stopped whatever she was doing. She walked straight up and introduced herself to me and, and remembered my mm. name. And that, that I think was my, probably my first quarterly workshop that I actually went to. And mm. I was nervous as all hell, you know, I, I was like, okay, yeah. I've just sort of been doing this for, you know, what feels like three seconds. And I'm walking into this room with all these other instructors that have been doing it for a lifetime or what I think is a lifetime because I don't know any of them. But she, <laughs> she made me feel so welcome in that environment. Mm. And yeah, yeah, they, they do, you know, m most, I'm going to say most trainers and printers, you guys do have that mm. skill set to be able to, to make people feel comfortable in, in a, a, a new environment or in an environment that is, is so uh, foreign or uncomfortable Yeah, with them. I, look, you just said that you're shy. I'm going to call bullshit on that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, okay. I, I don't know you that well, but nah, come on. You, you are not. There's, there's, there's something there. You, you, no way. I am, I am a huge, much as, you know, Tash has, Tash said it on um, her podcast. Yep. She's a huge introvert. Um, yep. Her and I both share that trait. We, we, we are the people that would go out to the, like the team <laughs> after Phylex and after quarterlies, all the extroverts that we work with are out having a great time, partying, drinking, eating. And Tash and I like, time to go home to bed let's <laughs> and we just like slink off see you later do the and houdini we're the, yeah we're the two yeah with the, um and we eventually other people would come with us as well where we'd go and sit quietly yeah just find a cafe somewhere um so you know we'd find we'd be the one finding the cafe on darling harbour or the quiet bar on darling harbour wow and hanging out there having you know having our dnm chats yeah um because yep. she she was one of my well she still is quite a you know a good friend a close friend yep. um but um, you know, she was my little <laughs> the person I took under my under my wing yeah, who when she yeah. came on the body combat team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just go and sit and have wow. some really, really cool chats. Um and I, I look, I, I, I love that and I know you're being honest, I'm just genuine up when I'm saying that, but it's it's <laughs> it's so yeah. When 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 I look at you as an instructor and or sorry, presenter and trainer up there on yeah on, on stage, I'm like, wow, yeah, you know, that's massive personality and uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, you know, I, I you, know that that's, that's, that's you when you're up there and you're a different person yeah. when you're off stage as well. I, I get that. And I, I, I think I appreciate that as a lot of the, the people that I've chatted to with, with this series have, have been very similar. They're, they're introverted extroverts. Yeah. Or is it extroverted it introverts? Extroverted, <laughs> yeah. whichever it is, I yeah. don't know. But it is, it is really only my desire to, um, you know, people always ask, why did you join the police force? And it was, yep. well, I just want to leave this world in a little bit better shape yep. than what it was when I came into it. Yep. And when I realized that I had this talent or skill or whatever it was or, or gift to be able to help people actually realize their own dream when it came to training instructors yep. and even just help people be able to realize that you know, that, that goal of being able to go to the gym and do a class was something they thought was out of reach, yeah. let alone being able to progress from, you know, being on the ground doing, you know, the low impact version of body attack to being able to jump, to being able to get onto a step, to being able to then, you know, lift a bar and do a deadlift properly and body pump. Yeah. It was, you know, that desire of, I feel, and this might sound a bit wanky to some people, but I really don't care because yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's my why. Yeah. And it's that if I can, you know, if I can help somebody, then I will, um, yeah. often to the detriment of myself, but yeah. it was just, you know what, I can actually help these people. And there is nothing better, Tony, than watching someone in a class have that moment of, oh my God, I finally got this step. Yeah. Um, yeah. as well as, you know, watching people on a module training, especially especially with body combat when they're, you know, they're trying to master techniques in a really short space of time yeah. that they have never done before that are so foreign, you know, watching them grow from day one just into day two yeah. and seeing them be like, oh my God, I can do it. You know, I can actually front kick now, like the way it's meant to look, not yeah. just this thing I was doing yeah. to start with. And that little win, each of those little wins is something that gives them more confidence. Yeah. And 
with every little win comes more and more confidence and the 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 confidence to try to be that little bit braver yep. to take those bigger steps to start to grow into all that they can be yeah um I, look and yeah that's i love that genuine ge- genuine what you just said then genuine words that that why yeah you know, why you do what you do i love it it's yeah. it's it, uh, thank you yeah Thank you for for me and all the instructors that are out there listening. Thank you for being you and doing what you do because w- without you guys leading us and about being up there and helping us through this, we're we're screwed. <laughs> Not everyone has the skills that you have. It's a genuine <laughs> skill set, and and thank you, thank you for passing it on and sharing it with us. And and it, you know what, it yeah. is it is an absolute pleasure just to watch that delight in yeah. people's faces, and and not from a point of you know give yourself a pat on the head Sharon you did that it's you know whenever people would come to me and say thank you thank you and you know instructors crying at the end of trainings and hugging you it's you know I would always say and sincerely mean it's like you did the work I didn't do that you did that I just pointed and steered that's it you're the person that's done the work so it's not me it's you yeah almost (laughs) like you were the you were the roadmap they just had to follow yeah, that's, to get there. And that's yeah. that's literally, you know, I, I think that's what you do as a, as a great trainer. It's you look at the, and, you know, I learnt, definitely learned this from Kylie Gates yep. was that, you know, your job is to look at that person. This is what they want to do. And you need to find the potential. You yeah. look for and see the potential and you hone in on that. Yeah. And you build them up to all they can be with with their strengths. And that gives them the confidence to tackle the things that they're not so great at. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's such a cool thing to watch. This is the Group X Podcast. Hey, how did you get the position of, of head program coach? How did that come up? Um, how did that come up? Um, uh, well, when I... Uh, who did I have as HPCs? Oh God, I don't think there, initially there wasn't there wasn't one. But then only as the pro, you know, we started to get more and more programs. It was too much for one person to handle. Um, I think Tommy Coots and Nicholas might yep. have been the first body combat HPC. Yep. And after him, I think I think Dorota D McNeil came in straight after him. Yep. And um, D was. I can't remember the exact circumstances, but I think she was, she wanted to step down or something else had happened. Um, she was, I think her and um, James had either just gotten married or were getting close to getting married and planning a family. And yep. I can't remember the whole ins and outs of it, but she, she had chosen to, to step aside and Gatesy had said to me, Hey, look, this is what's going on. Do you want to step down? We've had a chat how do you feel about being the next like HBC? And again, I was like, oh shit for a moment. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And then it was like, yeah, okay. Tell me more. Like, tell me what's involved. Tell me what I have to do. Tell me what's required, blah, 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 blah. Um, And of course, you know, Gatesy, (laughs) you know, being the ultimate professional that she is. And yeah, she just said, I think you'd be great at it. She goes, you know, you've been doing this long enough. You've literally been, you know, the, the head of this in Queensland for so long. You're our go-to person in Queensland. Um, yeah, and I was like, okay. And as, as luck would have it, we were, had a, um, I think it was a training and development weekend where Dan and Rach were out for Firelex or something. Yeah. And um, yeah. down we go. And it was my intro to, you know, Dan and Rach. And I, oh, unbeknownst to me, Dan and Rach had to sign off on me being the HPC. Oh, wow. Um but I, I had like, I mean, I had met them before and worked with them before that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was, that was actually the, the first weekend I met Tash. Yep. And there were a couple of other people that had auditioned that were, you know, sitting there as in, you know, the development stage of yes. becoming presenters and trainers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was literally, you know, as I am fond of saying to people who've gone to me, oh my God, you've, oh, you've done so much in your career. It's like, well, it's really just opportunity meeting preparation. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, all I did was, you know, just strove to be the best instructor I could literally for the people in my class. Because as a trainer and a presenter, that's all you are. You're still, you're still an instructor. Yeah. That's what you do. Yep. You still teach yep. to people. Yep. And if you're being the best you can in your class and the best that you can be, then, you know, when the opportunity comes along, 
you can go hell yeah and grab it with both hands with yeah. with confidence because you know you've done the groundwork yeah um so yeah that's that's how i came to be hpc was d decided to step down and was like hey shaz yeah. <laughs> do you want to do this <laughs> Do I? <laughs> do I? Yes, um, I do. <laughs> do I? What, sure. <laughs> what does the HPC role entail for those that sort of don't quite understand what it is? What What is the role of the HPC? Or I, I think it's changed the role. Title has probably changed now from what I can sort of yeah, gather. Yeah, it's changed. It's changed now. And oh, my understand, I'm a little bit vague on this, but there's now... Um, there's uh, two, I think, program like head program coaches or head program trainers or something. I'm not quite sure what the title is, and yep. D is one of those. Yep. Um, and I thought uh, AT was the other one. I don't know if he still is or not. No, AT stepped away now. Jacko. Jacko. Jacko? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then there's I, I don't know what the name of it is, but they're I don't know people that sort of uh, drive, I guess the presenting side of okay. everything that yep. sits for each program. Again, yes. not 100 percent certain. Could be wrong. Yep. Um, so when I was doing it, my role was literally to train, to train the trainers. So okay. anybody yep. new that was coming into the program, train them up, yep. um, continue to run module trainings, yes. um, drive your quarterly workshops. So track allocations and educational sessions and making sure people were all over those. Um, you're pretty much responsible for the quality of the program yep. in the, the country that you're, that you're in. Yeah. Or yep. looking after, yeah. So making sure that the presenter team, trainer team were on fire and delivering Schmico. what they needed to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a challenge. I mean, that, that, that in itself, I, I, I see similar to a group fitness management role in the fact that you would have had so many different personalities and so many different personality types yep. to, yes, they're all fitting in the one sort of genre and what they're doing in the one program, yep. but there's still so many different people within yeah. that, that that that's a skill set to have that that is is unique in itself as well because you you've got to deal with so many so many different factors yeah. i distinctly remember not i oh, yeah being yeah, newly appointed hpc and at filex and was i no i might not have been the hpc not yet at that stage I digress. Let's not talk about that. No. <laughs> That's why we edit the shit out oh, of these no. things. <laughs> no, we can, we, we can talk about it. Um, yep. uh, so Dan and Rach were supposed to be at Filex. And as it turned out, Rach was, Rach didn't come because Rach got really, really ill. Yep. And we turned up for rehearsal and I, I was not actually presenting. I was just shadowing for this, this Filex in particular. And, um, who was teaching? I think D had a D had a couple of tracks. Shannon had a track or two, and Tommy. Oh, I can't I can't even remember. But I remember that Dan got sick on the Saturday night, and so it was literally like, okay, Shannon, you're going to have to teach this. Dorothy, you're going to have to teach that. Blah 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 blah. And a lot of it had fallen to Shannon to do yep. because because she's such a big personality yeah. and. Yep. such a great instructor as well let's not take that away from the woman yep. um and she was again probably an insight into shannon cleary she may not want people to know but she was packing shit yeah and i remember grabbing her by the shoulders and looking at her and going you have got this woman i said yeah. why are you doubting yourself you are freaking awesome it's just another it's just another class just another, yeah you're in sydney yep. And it's instructors. It's people that you teach to all the time. They come to your classes, for God's sake. Yeah. It's like, just go out there and do what you do, woman. Yeah. You'll be fine. Um, I've yeah, got to get her on she's... the show to have a chat too. I've got to oh, reach yeah. out to her and go, oh, yeah. come on. The, the sad thing <laughs> with that is because Shannon and I have known each other for so many years, obviously, that it'll probably be a yep. five-hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There'd she's be so many tangents it wouldn't be funny. <laughs> It'd just keep, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, that's um, so. Yeah, so like, there's big personalities like you know Shannon that you had to manage, yeah. um, and you know quieter and smaller personalities as time went by. Yeah. Um, and then when you know when she, I mean, the team changed and evolved over the years. But I was super fortunate through the majority of it to have some like a and body combat wasn't a huge team. Yep. Um, it was probably smaller than a lot of the others. Uh, but I was just again for. I've just been 
as Andrew loves to say, he likes to say kissed on the cock by a fairy, yeah. but I don't have a penis, so I can't say that. But bless. Um, you know, my, my team was, you know, Dean McNeil, um, yep. Matt Sadler, yep. uh, Nathan Jones, yes. Annie Pistakakis, um, wow. Tash, um, Lou, Lou Waller from, um, yeah. Louise Waller from yep. WA, WA. Yep. Um, the Bayardis, Troy and Danielle. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amazing people. I yeah, I wow. just had wow. freaking amazing people. And like HBCs in my team, like other people yeah. that could help me manage my team if I needed. Yep. But um, yeah, it's, yeah. But like you say, it's, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a challenge at times to juggle, juggle all those, those different needs and wants yeah. and to be able to help all those people get what they need from that program yes. as a presenter or as a trainer yeah. um, yep. and to make them feel, you know, that they're really giving their opportunity to shine. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what I wanted for all of them was their own opportunity to shine yeah. every single quarterly, whatever, wherever they were, yeah. but an opportunity to, you know, do their thing. I think that's to me, I, 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 I appreciate that because whenever I've been in a position of management, <clears throat> I always want my staff to shine. I'll always put yeah. them forward and always make sure yep. that they are, you know what, you outshine me. Yeah, the, 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 I look yep. at a management bureau role and sort of in uh, you know, a pers person in that position to sort of go, you want your team to grow yeah. that much that they push you out of your job. Yeah. Yep. Push me I, out, push me up so that you come yep, in and you can replace me doing what I've been yep. doing. That's when you know that's, that you have nailed it as a manager or as yep. a person in charge when you've got someone that goes, yeah, I, I, not that I'm taking your job, but – when it's time for you to step away, yeah, I'm stepping in. That's yep. that, yeah, yeah. And that's you know that that was the direction I looked. I looked at them to give me the direction as to what I needed to develop in next. Yeah, it's like okay, you're all here. Yeah, I need to lift my game and go to here to be able to keep growing you guys. Yep. So for me, it was never you know being being the leader of the team. It's never about me. It's never about you know, you as the leader, it's always about your people. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Hey, I, this, and this is very naive of me. I probably should have done some research <clears throat> on this before I even hmm. go down this path. Did you ever get an opportunity to present on a video? Yeah, I did. Um, Tell us about probably that. It wasn't, <clears throat> probably wasn't too long after I'd been made HPC. HPC. Yep. Um, yep. And Filets was happening and in those days as the HPC you only usually got to present one track yep. that was you know because you know everyone came for the program directors of course yes. yeah yeah um and I got I got this freaking track because Dan and Rachel said we've seen you present power training tracks we want to see you do a combat track now and I'm like oh great yeah. fantastic <laughs> I've got a freaking kick in front of them I'm fantastic great yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget on this on this release it was the release where um they wore the white geese. Um, so there was Dan, Rach, Tanya, I can't remember Tanya's last name, from the UK. She was the HBC from the UK at that stage. Right. And Hernan was on it as well. And I got this absolute mother of a track that had this crap timing for skipping. There was a skipping component in it in track four and it was, I was just like, please don't make me present that. I'm not praying. Please don't make, please don't play. And I'm like, God damn it, but track four. So... <laughs> And then, of course, I'm like, it's been a while since I've presented at Filex. Okay, I need to make this good. This needs to be great. And for me, it was like, I'm going to let everybody down if it's not as good as it needs to be. Yeah. So I practiced my ring off, scripted the crap out of that track <laughs> until it sounded natural. Yep. Um, yep. And I remember I had to, um, we did the rehearsal for the masterclass at whatever gym it was, a fitness fest in Sydney somewhere. And then Rach goes, do you want to present your track for Dan? And I went, sure, why not? Because, you know, it's like, what else do you say? But yep. you're not going to go, no, I guess No, not. look, no, I won't. I'll do, <laughs> maybe next week, maybe next time. No, <laughs> no it'll be right to Dan. I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> thank you, present. So, you know, for all those people who want to be a trainer or have had to audition in front of, you know, other you know head program coaches or trainers from that state yep. with people standing in front of you participating no no that didn't happen for me this day they're sitting on the stage and i teach to them just like that i just do the track there is no one else there oh fully have to teach it like you're teaching it 
<laughs> so hard. <laughs> um, That's and when I finished, yeah, <laughs> when I finished, I was like, okay, feedback. And Dan was like, looked at Rachel. Rachel looked at Dan, and he goes. Yeah, that's really good. And he, he picked out a few things that I'd said and he's like, you know, keep this, maybe get rid of that, leave a little bit of, leave a little bit of space here, let the music do the talking here, do it a little bit more into here. And he goes, but yeah, he goes, yeah, teach that like that tomorrow. That'll be great. Awesome. Holy shit. Yeah. D- yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've, I've never, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I've, you've, you've done it to me again. I'm, words have gone. <laughs> but te- <laughs> Well, hang on a second. I need yeah, to get words right. This, but doing sitting on the stage and you're well, teaching the track. Just the three of you in the room. Correct. Oh, not awkward at all. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, Sweet. <laughs> I mean, the, the, these are the people whose approval, let's face it, whose approval as a body combat, you know, instructor, trainer, whatever. Yeah. You want you want their approval. Like to get the tip from yeah. them. Oh, is God, what yes. You want. yes, yes. And considering I'm supposed to be presenting the thing the next day, it's like I really need your approval because I don't want to go out there and absolutely make this be be like crap. I need this to be good. Um, yeah, God, you have you have experienced so much more than the average <laughs> instructor, trainer, <laughs> presenter. Uh, but but not only that, that's an opportunity and a half to you yeah. know, I guess being so far out of your comfort zone and there's just three people in the room yep. and you're the only one moving and they're just sitting there, yep. you know, but almost arms folded or legs crossed watching you. <laughs> um, holy crap. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. <laughs> but as you just, as you just said, you know, all that stuff that shoves you, you know, you, no one grows, no one becomes yeah. better or stronger or, yep. uh, you know, a better version of themselves sitting inside that nice little circle. That's their comfort zone. You got to get outside it. Yeah. And it is, it's like, you know, hand on heart, you know, doing that it's, and you know, you know I kind of get why they did it because it's like sitting, standing here, presenting to us. That's yeah. going to be, you know, teaching tomorrow. That's going to be a piece of cake compared yeah. to this. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. That's yeah. When you look at it in that way, that's so true because yeah. you, you, you can do it to us. We're, we're, we're going to be your, yep. your biggest critics. If you've got this, yeah, yep. tomorrow's a piece of cake. That's a walk in the park. Yeah, yeah. Nail it. Yep. Such, such, such consummate freaking legends at what they do, those people. Yeah. Like they just know what to do to get people to do what needs to be done. Yeah. From the, an instructing perspective. The so filming, good. the filming process. Oh, the filming process. So yeah. How did that how did how how did that work back then? Like was it, how was did it that over work a week? Then? Is it is it do they uh, do they film? 20 classes and put it all together or is it just no. the one class and away you go and, and you <laughs> one know. class it was over probably about 10 days so fly into you knew like you knew what you were you knew you'd been chosen and picked obviously yeah, yeah. um i was also again super fortunate i'm just like super lucky with my career really in that dan and rachel so or dan picked me to be what was at that stage called program knowledge Yep. And I also was proofing the notes at that stage as well. So, yep, whenever there were body combat mistakes in the notes, that was me back then. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, Damn yeah, work. so program knowledge, yeah, program knowledge was this thing where the educational material that got released each quarter, my job was to make sure it was aligning with what we were training at modules. Yep. And to make sure that, you know, the message that Dan and Rach wanted to get to the rest of the world aligned with what we were doing in training modules. Because they they didn't do a lot of training modules, they did a ton of presenting yeah. and yeah. you know talking to people. So um, I had did I have did I have a draft? No, I didn't have a draft. I think I had music at that stage. Yep. I may have gotten music sent to me, but we didn't have. Um, you didn't get a video because what people forget is that you know the video that the instructors learn from that's the thing that you're going to make. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing for you to learn off. No. There's no notes. No notes. That doesn't happen. Not at all. Um, well, when I did it, there were no notes. And you, so it's just here's the music, learn it. As in, you know, well, get, get to know the music and get to understand what's happening. Kind in the of. Music. <laughs> Holy shit. So the notes, actually, the, note, the notes were probably, we got the notes when we got there or maybe after the first class, but they were very rough. Yeah. Wow. Um, so turn up. Um, I think I got there a day early. And I went and did a class with um, Steve Tanzi and Taku that I presented with. Um, and Steve and I had met at Summit, I think, a year or two earlier. So we knew who each other were. Yeah. 
um, but didn't know a whole lot about each other. Um, so, yeah, we went and did, did a class, did the class that night. Dan and Rach were teaching it and it was the release that we were going to be doing. Yep. Um, and let me tell you, there were things that they did that night that did not appear on the video. Yeah. <laughs> there were things that were very, it changed, it, yep. it evolved. Yeah. Uh, go to bed, come up, get up the next morning. We went and actually, yeah, there's a, like a, a schedule that you have. So you trotted on down to LMI, yep. um, got to meet the other people that were there to do filming. Yep. Um, Jackie did a, a welcome, a how you're going, um, a whole run through of things that, I guess a lot of people wouldn't think about when in their mind, how, what would it be to be like on a, on a DVD? Oh, yeah. And I kind of went with the, I'm actually here to do a job. There's, there's an expectation of, you know, the level I'm going to present at the quality of product I've got to deliver. Yeah. I am here to do a job. Yeah. So they went through the whole, you know, how important sleep was, how important nutrition was. Um, Bryce came and had a chat to you about injuries and the importance of rest. Um, all those things that it was, you know, massive on you've got to fuel yourself properly and you've got to make sure you're getting sleep. And if you get hurt, you need to tell us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it, it was a huge thing to like look after yourselves because if you don't, you're not going to be able to perform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then pretty soon after that, Dan and Rach had a, had a body combat class on at Auckland. So yep. we went and did that. Yep. Um, and that was our probably our first real thing of like, this is what we're going to be doing is watch watch this class and this is how the tracks are going to go um then back to lmi uh at that stage they had we hadn't dan hadn't decided on who was going to be doing what tracks exactly yes um yep. they had they had they were tossing around that you know that i was going to open which i ended up doing the upper body warm-up um and i ended up doing track three three two three I can't remember. Isn't that really bad? I can't even remember the freaking number I did yep. on how to roundhouse in at track two. Um, <laughs> yes, how do I remember? Um, yeah, but pretty much every day was you would go and teach a class in the morning, have some food, go into the studio, uh, do some work on tracks or a track or and certain things about it from technical work to presenting skills to how we were going to do what little performance aspects as a group, yep. we were going to stand, what was going to happen. Yep. Um, and that all happened over a period of 10 days. We got, I think you got two rest days in there that you needed to have. Um, when you say rest days, just nothing. Where you didn't, you didn't do anything. You didn't, okay. you didn't, yep. you didn't teach and you didn't, you know, work on the work on the workout, but yep. you taught twice a day. Um, and then there was constant studio work going on in between all those times um and that would sometimes be as as in a group yep. or sometimes it'd be one-on-one -on -one. um and that was the first body combat release in a while where pete wasn't the like the the, the coach yes um yep. i can't remember what pete was doing at that stage something 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 important had happened yep. <laughs> um yep. and we had hernan so hernan was our other coach and our I got to spend, I mean, I got to spend a bit of time with Rach because as Rach being, you know, the female role model, um, she's the person that I'm, you know, that's, that's what I look at to this yes. is the brand as a female for yeah. body combat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I got to spend some time with Rach, but I also got to spend a hell of a lot of time with Dan and I'd, I'd already ha had a pretty good connection with Rach. Yep. Dan, Dan, I was a little bit scared of Dan for a long time. Um, but after doing DVD, I wasn't scared of Dan anymore. Yeah. Um, and I remember being, you know, being slightly intimidated yet again, even after spending a few days with this guy. Yeah. And this this one day of Dan taking me aside to work on a few things, and just that thing I said before about they are both just so good at saying what needs to be said yep. and doing what needs to be done to yep. get you to go to a place that you have never been before. Yeah. And yep. what and it's just it's. Oh, it's just amazing to work with someone who literally makes you more than you ever thought you could awesome. be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so much, so much respect and love for both of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I don't, I don't get to see them anymore, but you know, Rach and I will still have little chats on, you know, Instagram messenger yep. or, yep. you know, email her for a birthday and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Just so much respect for, for both of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
the videoing itself, it's like you're actually, apart from feeling like I needed to go to the toilet every 10 minutes right before it, <laughs> um, you, like you just feel super prepared, but yep. it's, it's a really surreal thing to do as well. Um, in that you're you're aware of what's going on, but you're not aware. Well, I was aware of what was going on, but yep. not aware of what was going on as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I don't know. I think by the end of it, like you start to. I felt like I actually started to relax after I'd finished teaching my tracks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep. But um, I also stayed. I stayed in New Zealand because I think Annie Annie was doing body jam. I think in that same round of Release. filming. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I wanted to stay and uh, see her do that and support her. Um, Wendy, I know Wendy had, that's right, Wendy came over to, because um, it was my filming, and we'd always, because her and I have been friends since body step, mod, instruct, uh, not body step, module training, um, train the trainer sure. training. Okay, yep. Um, yep. Yeah, her and I had been best buds since then. So that's like a friendship that's just lasted eons. Yeah. Um, and we always promised each other if we ever, you know, got to do a DVD, then we'd be there for each other's first one. Yep. And so, yeah, I went over for her first body step one. Um, but, yeah, she was there. It's, yeah, filming's, I mean, I think filming even now is different to what filming was like when I did when, yeah. 40 yep. Body Combat 45. Yep. <laughs> um, what are we at now? So I don't know, 80 something. Yeah. So it was, it was 10, <laughs> like 10 or, 10 or 12 years ago now. Yeah. It's a long time ago. And yeah. like you talk about production, you know, the difference now to, to even then. Um, well, that's that's what I remember as well when I, when living with uh, AT and, and Vanessa that the, what what I saw on the TV, their shirts were back to front. Yeah. Because yeah. Because the, the, yeah yeah. Hang yep. on a second. What what? Why is that? Yep. And that was I remember asking yep. that question because I'd only ever done RPM back then, and it was yep. like why is why is that Les Mills sign back to front? What what have you done to the TV? What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then understanding that the left, right, right, left, and all that kind of stuff, and it made so much sense. But you don't, I don't think you see that these days, do you? Uh, no. Well, I don't know. Like, no, you, we just, you just see the finished product. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, like, yeah, I do, I do remember that because, funny you say that, because there was a period of time, like, the video cassette thing is, yep. when we were learning off those, the imaging was not reversed in those days. Yep. So the presenters would present and it would get filmed the way it was. And you were at home trying to learn it going the opposite the way opposite to them. Way to that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to move in the opposite direction to them. That's Whereas confusing. yeah, now after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Hey, we managed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. True. But it's uh, that, that again shows how much it's evolved over yeah. time. You know, the whole, yeah, you, know, you see what it is today with the, the, the way they're filming and the way it is, is put out for um, the virtual stuff as well yep. compared to, you know, go back 10 years, probably even yeah. more than that now. It's been, it's been that long for me, but go back, go back before they started doing the virtual stuff or recording that. It was so different, you know, for yeah. even I, if I, I refer back to RPM being, being the main program mm. that I always taught, but th yep. that was done and filmed in the small studio for mm. so many years and so many releases. Mm. And then all of a sudden it's on this massive big stage and you're not seeing it yeah. in the class anymore. And it, it's, yep. it, it evolved, it changed. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of talk on social media um, about it these days where a lot of instructors are like, oh, it's just changed so much. It's like, you know what? It had to, you know, I, I get, yeah. I get that it's not what it was and not what you're used to, but look at, no. look at where it was from, you know, the video camera, or the handy cam at the back of the room yeah. before, yep. you know, when, when Mike and, and Emma and, and, um, uh, hey, uh Steve. Yeah. And, Steve and, and, and yeah. yeah, Susan, I was going to say Susan Tolley then as well, that, that those yep. guys, you're looking at them and it's like, wow, you know, that's, that's the original the OG guy yeah, is there. That's, that's how right. it was yep. different then. That's the OG. Yeah. yeah. And now it's it's that it's it's such a polished yeah. production that is yep. it's yeah, it's had to evolve. Otherwise it was gonna be yep. you know. But as, to answer your question about is it cut and put together? Ideally, no. The ideal yep. scenario was you get up, the music presses play, they do a mic test, yep. press play on the music, off you go. Yep. That's it. Beginning to end. And I think we did body combat 40 beginning to end. Yep. Um but I mean, they like they. I don't know if anyone else has talked about their presenting um, their DVD experiences. But the things like your like your microphone, your your transmitter pack is wrapped in a zip seal bag, yep. so that if you're sweating profusely, which you do under those lights on yes. that stage in Auckland, yep. 
the sweat doesn't destroy the mics. Yeah. The cords are, you know, strategically placed in your clothing so you're not going to tangle them up so you can yes. turn your head. Yep. They're taped if they need to be. Yep. Um, yep. The really, really weird sensation of talking and only being able to hear yourself because they change when they when they film, they change the way the sound in the studio works. So uh, you know how normally when you're instructing, there's a foldback speaker or two and you can hear, you can hear you. what you're saying and you yeah. can hear how you sound out there on the floor. Yeah. You don't hear that. Well, I didn't hear that when we were filming. And it was, and because as people know, I've have been known to have quite a loud voice no. at certain stages of tracks no. when I need to. <laughs> And, and Dan was like, you, Sharon, you have to be so careful not to shout. He goes, you're not going to be able to hear yourself. You've got to trust that talking at the levels that we have worked at or instructing at the levels we have worked at is going to work. He goes, because if you use that monster voice you have, you're going to deafen all the sound guys so and we'll have to stop and start again. So could the guys that are in your participants in the class, could they hear it properly? Yeah, they can hear you. But you can, you, I mean, you can you, hear, but you can't hear to the same level right. that is yep. out on the floor. Yep. So you've just got yeah. to trust that the level you're at is going to be yeah. okay. The people on and the floor can a, hear it and everyone can. Yeah. And that's, yeah. That's you don't need hard. to yell that so really that you hard. can hear yourself because yeah, they, they that, already can. Yep. Yeah. And that was a really hard thing for me because I was always, I, I can't hear myself. I don't know where I'm at. Yeah. So yep. it was trusting yep. that I could that the level that I could hear myself at? I mean, the fallbacks were turned up enough you could hear what you needed to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it didn't sound the same as it did out on the floor. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and after it's all over, you trotted back down to LMI and you watched it. You had a look at it. You had a look at the line cut. <laughs> this is the Group X Podcast. How did you feel after the first one? Oh. <laughs> when you when you're sitting there and you're in the room with everybody and you're watching it, yeah. what's what's going through your mind? Oh, me being me, all the things I could have done better. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I um, I get that, and I I that's that's probably one thing that's rung true with everyone I've chatted to so far that has gone all through the that, things, that process yep. of yeah. So, oh shit! I should have done that. I should have said this. Yeah. Oh, oh god! God! Yep. God! But it's perfect. Like, you guys are perfect. Done what, that. <laughs> what you've done is is amazing and it, you nail it all, but it's that I think we are our own, our own worst critic in that oh, God, we yeah. think, you know what, yeah. no, I could have done that a shitload better. Oh, that yep. was crap. Oh, no, no. But yeah, yeah. Having that self-doubt, <laughs> it's, it's a natural yep. thing, but it's, yep. it's yeah, having the confidence to sort of go, you know what, yeah, okay. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and then, yeah, like you said, and then going after you do that, I'll give yourself an uppercut about five times. Yep. Um, just go, well, you know what? I can't change it. Yeah. It, it's, it's there now. That's what's going out. I can't yeah. go stamp my feet and go, no, no, no. I want to do it again yeah. and get, you know, LMI to go schedule a whole nother body combat filming. Cause that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be, you know, you have to that get to that place of acceptance yeah. of, okay. It's not exactly what I wanted. I don't think it's my best work, yeah. but you know what? I, I got here yes, and I didn't think I was, I actually didn't think I was ever going to get to do a DVD. And for a lot of trainers at that back then, it, it was the thing that you strove for. Yes. And yep. I remember probably about two years earlier, I think, actually, as I became HBC, say, actually saying to Gatesy, she's saying to me, like, do you want to do a DVD? And I went, you know what? It'd be nice. Yep. But you know what, Kylie, if I don't, I don't, it's okay. you know, this yeah. is, if I can, it's okay. Like yep. if I can, you know, help these guys be the best that they can be and help the instructors in Australia be the best that they can be yeah. and make body combat the best it can be in Australia, yeah. then that's my job as yeah. an HPC. My job is yeah. not to, you know, get on a DVD. Yeah. And no word of a lie, she goes, you are in exactly the right place to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, you, you, and I've said this to a couple of the guys, you're not a Pavarotti either. Yeah. You're not a me, 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 me. <laughs> type person no, at all and and no. people think i'm derogatory when i say that and i don't give a shit what they think but it's it's <laughs> it's there's there's a lot of show ponies um yeah. out there in our industry and, and and there are some some that are trainers and some that are presenters and but most of them i sit i believe just sit in the the instructor land of don't you know who i am you know and i say that in jest oh, for 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 tash yeah. but there's there's a lot of them that are are very very much pavarotti's it's like you know i'm i'm the best i'm you're not, you're just an instructor, get over yourself, you know, but, but when, when you find someone like yourself, who is authentic, genuine, 
you're there, as you just said, you're there to make your team better. Mm. It's, That's... you know, once you become, yeah, once you become HPC in Australia, well, then in Australia, mm. and once you did DVD, yep. it's suddenly you become this, um, it's almost like public property. Yep. And I, I remember chatting to Rach about it at one stage and saying, you know, the first Filex I was HPC, I literally, and we used to have the, the autograph signing sessions where yes. people would get their photos taken yeah. with the program directors and that. Oh, wow. It's, I sort of just came down and was helping direct all that and yep. help control the flow because, you know, as well as being great, great presenters and great, just great everything to do with body combat, Dan and Rach are actually genuinely freaking nice people. Yeah. They are yep. just, yeah, they are awesome people. Um. And I was just helping control the flow of traffic and, you know, help it, you know, taking photos for people and that sort of stuff. And then someone goes, Hey, Sharon, can like, we want you in the photo. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? No, what? Me? What? Real? Oh, what? okay. All right. <laughs> Go over and get a photo. And the next minute it's like, Oh, me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. And I'm going, and in my brain, I'm going, what, what is what? going on here? Yeah. Yep. And kind of just went with it at the moment, in the moment. And I remember going upstairs and Rachel, Rachel just laughing at me a bit and going, are you okay? And I went, how did that happen? Like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just me. And yep. my job is to teach classes and yep. to, I said, why are people asking me for my autograph? And she goes, she goes, honey, you're going to have to start to get used to used it. Used to it. Yeah. Because, yep. you know, people look at you, are going to look at you now as, you know, this is, this yeah. is who I want to be like when yep. it comes to instructing. You know, yep. she's been on a DVD. She yeah. heads the program in the country. Yep. She does all this stuff. Um, that's, um, and to me, I mean, this is something I realized in policing is that whenever you are in a position of any power, there is a freaking huge, actually, I'm just going to say it, there's a fucking huge responsibility yeah. yep. comes with that. And if you are arrogant enough to think that it, there isn't or there doesn't, yep then you really need to learn in a hurry yeah. that, yeah. you know, there is a huge amount of responsibility that goes with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, like, that always weighed heavily on me as well was like, you know, any choice that I made or anything that I did in a, not so much in a class at the gym, yeah. but yeah. in a module training at a quarterly, yeah. like even just walking around at a quarterly, it's, you know, the potential to damage the brand yeah. and not just, you know, the LMAP brand, the body combat brand, the yep. LMI brand, all of that. Yeah. You um, you automatically become under their microscope. Yeah. 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 You're and magnified it's... so much that people are looking at every single thing yeah. you do and you, you can't, yep. you can't fuck up. You can't step no. out of line. You can't, you know, you, you, yeah. No. Yeah. And that, and for someone like me who is all about being, you know, authentic, yep. um, You've like, it's like, oh, maybe I can't do that. Or, yep. you know, what's going to happen if I do? Or is someone yeah. going to take that the wrong way? And, oh, my God, I didn't mean that. I'm so yep. sorry I upset you. And then I would get upset because I'd upset people. And yep. it's yep. it's just there is so, you know, people. I know people look at it and go, oh, I want to be a trainer. And I had, I had this idea that I talked with Wendy about when I still was training and presenting and said, you know what we should do? We should do a month in the life of a trainer yep. and like be like so, and call it so you want to be a trainer. Yeah. And it's and show that getting up in the morning, you know, to download your music and print out your Cory notes yep. and then listening to the freaking video in your car everywhere that yep. you drove for the next yes. four weeks and staying up late at night and the scripting and then your partner going, Oh, for Christ's sake, can you turn yep. that shit off? Because I need to go to sleep. And <laughs> being the biggest thing Andrew would have is that I would always come home sick. It's like, yep. Oh, you're going to go away for a quarterly. You're going to come home sick. I have to look after you for, yep. you know, and not teaching, teaching sick, yep. <laughs> all yep. that stuff. Yep. And it's, it's, it's not the super glamorous thing that people think it is. Yeah. It is yep. fucking hard work. Um, and you've, you've got to want it for the right reasons. Yes. Yeah, if if you don't, you are you are you're not going to succeed. Yeah, you're destined for you've, failure, and there's going to be yeah yeah you've you've got to want it for literally to be the best instructor you can be. Yeah, yeah. for whoever you're teaching to. Yeah. If there's any words of advice you'd give to an instructor, would it be those, or is there is there something more that you would say to an instructor? Hey, if you want to do this, this is what you need to do. It would still, and even you know, even now that I've moved 
you know, I haven't completely cut the ties because yep. I still participate yep. and did did teach a bit of body combat a couple of years ago <laughs> yep. for a yep. little while until it just wouldn't fit in. Yep. Um, but I'm super tempted to go back to core just quietly. Yep. Super tempted. Cool. Um, I even say it to people, you know, in the in the Pilates world now, it's, yep. you know, your your job is you you literally just be the best instructor that you can and you want to do it for the people that are in front of you. Yeah. It's, it's not for you. Like you don't do it for yourself. Yep. Some, I mean, yep. in a way that you do, you know, to keep your sanity and yeah. your stress yep. and because you yep. love it. Yep. Yes. Um, but you a hundred percent, you, you, you've got to want to be there for the people in your classes, because yep. if you didn't have those classes every week, then you wouldn't be the skilled instructor that you are. And yep. being that skilled instructor that you are and honing and developing your skills with the people in your classes and the differences that they bring to you every week is how you grow and develop as an instructor. Yeah. And then when the opportunity arises, you have got your freaking toolkit yeah. all sewn up and stitched up and you are ready. Yeah. You are going to audition and you are going to blow people away yeah. because you can, you can tell the people that love what they do and love it because they are teaching to who they are teaching to, yeah. not because it's all about standing in their glory on the stage yes. and everyone staring yeah. at them. They're not being the Pavarotti's. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that, that, that authenticity, that genuineness, that passion, that love yep. shines through and it is so contagious. Yeah. And people want that. That's what makes people want to go to that person's class. This is the Group X Podcast. I love the journey that you've been on. <laughs> Seriously. And I, I, I would say, we, you know, we've been chatting for about an hour and a half and you've had me hanging off every word because where you started <laughs> to where you are now has, has, I'm going to say it's almost from one, one end of the spectrum to the other. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You've, you've done it. You've seen it. You've experienced it. There's, yep. there's so much that you've gone through and, and I yeah. think that's great because there's, there, and there's obviously still more to come because life doesn't end as soon as you oh, stop yeah. teaching group X classes, nah. there's still more to it. And I think that's, yeah. That's one thing that uh, I'm going to say a lot of, a lot of instructors that are out there now, we're aging. We're not getting younger. Yeah. We're getting aging. No. We're aging. And it's, it's getting, yep. as you said, it's harder and harder to do certain things. You know, I, I, yep. I remember starting when I was back then anyway, we won't go into my age either, but, <laughs> but you know, 23, when I, when I jumped in, uh, I was a lot more agile and a lot more yeah. you know, able to, to touch my toes then compared to, yep. to now. Um, but yep. you, you've got to adapt what you're doing as you're getting yes. older. And I think as instructors, yes. when you're still passionate about it and if you've been doing it for such a long time, you yep. need to evolve. Like what the programs have, we need to as well. Because yeah. you remember that, that you remember those people that we, we taught, those people that, that were in our classes? Yeah. They're old as well. They are, that's right. They want to be doing something as well. They're not those young spring chickens anymore. They're not the 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds right. that used to come along mm. when we were back yep. in 20 and 30 doing it. They are. Yep the same age as us now. So, so if you've yep. managed to evolve and they've evolved with you and you're still doing stuff, you're still yeah. relevant no matter what, you know, I, I've had some no, conversations right. where yeah. people have said to me, Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not presenting or training anymore. I'm not, I'm no longer relevant. It's like, yeah, you are. You're oh, probably more so relevant yeah. at these days. You, you're not, you're not relevant as in, in what's happening in that space, but yep. your relevant is in the journey that you've gone on and where we all are now as we're getting older. Yeah. People are still... I get that feeling though, because making the break from LM was hard yep. because it's, it's something that I did for so long. And I know that Les Mills is not who I am. It's yep. not, it's, it's not, it's not me, yeah. yep. Um, yep. but it's so much a part of yes. what I did yeah. for such a long time that you do, it's a hand on heart, any, like you, you, I grieved when I left yep. and it took a long time yep. to be able to, you know, talk, talk a lot about it, yep. to be able to speak about yep. it because you just, you know, there's, there's something about, for me, it was, I don't feel like I'm helping people anymore. Yep. Yep. I still, but I still am now. And it's, it's part of the reason I chose to go on to study was like, yeah. okay, yep. I'm really going to help people now. Yep. Um, but it's hard. Yeah. It is so hard to, actually you know cut the cord and I, I don't know if you ever really do i think you are you know even just through memories and friendships you are yes. always connected. always going to be connected it's always a big yep. part of who you were and will always be yeah. you don't have to be 
in there smashing 100%. yourself teaching all the yep. time. You're always going to have the friendships you made, the memories. No one yep. can take that shit away from you. No one. No. You know, and, unless you get you know, old, old timers disease or old <laughs> 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 and forget. Yeah. Um, like, what was I doing? Not, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And you know, not ne- nothing is ever perfect. Yeah. I mean, so whilst you know, whilst I have been, as I've said, incredibly fortunate to be trained by you know some amazing human beings. Um, you know, my my career had speed bumps and yep. freaking valleys and dips yep. and all that yep. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but. You know that, as, as we've already talked about, that's the stuff that makes you grow and makes you stronger. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you do you have to go well. Okay, the time has come. I, I can't do this anymore because if I do, I am going to be at the physio four times a week yeah. for the next six months. <laughs> maybe end up having to have surgery, yep. which I have still missed. Thank yep. God. Yep. Um, and it's just like where, like where can I go sideways? Where can I take these skills that I have yeah. and continue to use them and yep. I would be the biggest liar if I said that Les Mills does still not influence the way that I teach. Yep. I have yep. been able to take those skills yep. and the girls that teach for me in the studio that I manage still go, how the hell do you know all this stuff? And yep. I go, because I spent 20 plus years yeah. working for the greatest group fitness company in the world yep. and no one will ever take that title from them. Yeah. And the stuff that they teach you works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And you can, you so, know, you can so true. slide it across yeah. to, to other areas that you teach in. Yeah. And, you know, just teaching them a fraction of what I know, just, yeah. just coaching. Yeah. It just makes people who have very limited skills and knowledge in the area of being able to teach to a group of people yeah. suddenly become super competent so, yeah. at being able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, you know, for, for LM to have, I love, I love that this company has a reach beyond their own products. Yep. Yep. They full on reach out and impact the rest of the fitness industry just by doing what they do. Yeah. I love yeah, it. It's, and it is, it love has, it. yeah, it has been such, such a privilege to, you know, have worked with them, worked for them been trained by the people I was trained with, have the friendships I still have, um, being able to help so many people on their own journeys and their own experiences that like, that is that's powerful. such a privilege yeah. that people trusted, trusted me with their dream yeah. and that in some way, shape or form, I was able to provide a ramp or a springboard yep. for them to, you know, go on and yeah. you know, they're still teaching now. Love it. Hey, thank you. Thank you so, so much for coming on and having a chat with me and sharing everything you have. It's, oh, you're it's, welcome. Thank you yeah. for having me, really. No, look, I, I'm I'm so grateful that when I reached out and asked and you said yes, I was I was like, you know what, wow. I as I said earlier on, I I I knew of you, I know you a little bit, but I'm so grateful to spend <laughs> some time with you and, and and get to know you, you know, a lot better and and know that story. You are a dead set legend in in our industry and Again, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and having a chat.